So I want to welcome everybody to come to my house. And as I told you before, this is a work in progress. It's not where what our vision is complete, you know, in the next year or so, we're going to be complete with it. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. 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 Oh my gosh, what a nice surprise. We have a lot of different projects we're doing back here. Uh, we're building a food forest, we'll talk about that. We got oh, a lot of interesting other things neat. that are raised beds are unique. So first thing, this is my chipper, but having a good chipper is very important it's because everything on our property we reuse. Everything we trim from our trees, whatever, it's either being mulched, it's being um, uh, composted, or it's making biochar from it. This is one part of our rain storage system. We have an extremely large roof. These things fill up on a good rain season. These are filled up in one or two days. So I'm going to use all this water up, I'm going to clean the tanks out, and then I'm going to put a little bit bigger pump in there, because this one's too slow, hmm. you know, and uh, rehook it up to the solar panel so it's independent of itself. So right here is one of the most ingenious raised bed systems I have ever seen in my life. A friend of mine, Ray Serino, who is an incredibly gifted artist, and he makes everything from repurposing. This is recycled plastic, number two, last 50 years. Two foot by 12 foot sheet, five eighths inch thick. Lay it in the sun, get it a little soft, turn it into a circle, bolt it together. Now it'll, it'll last forever. You wanna move it? You just, I don't wanna do it now, but you just pick it up and roll it to the next place. You can move it anywhere. One person can handle it, it's not that heavy. What's so no bottom on it? No bottom. Oh, well, I have Maybe. steel mesh on the bottom. For gophers. For gophers. Yeah. This is going to be a uh, controlled experiment so here's what we're going to do. This one is going to be, all the soil will be the same soil everywhere, in all four. This one will be soil only. This one will be soil and biochar. This one will be soil and compost. And this one will be soil, biochar, and compost. So we can really see the difference. These citrus trees were put in by the previous owner more than 20 years ago. And what they did is the owner bought the trees in the box, set the box down, and just left them. So obviously after 20 years, or even less, they grew into the ground. Their roots are all down there. But the boxes fell apart. And it looked ugly. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I had these extra things, and I was going to do something else with them. My wife came over, she goes, well, why don't you wrap them around there? Honey, that's fantastic. So we wrapped them around there, and of course there's not much root in there, so we filled it with perlite and just stuff, you know, because I want to waste good soil on that. So six years ago, these trees were doing very, very poorly. Nobody cared for them, nothing was going well with them. They had curly leaf, white fly, I mean, just everything, lots of bad stuff. So I biocharred the heck out of this area. Six years ago, we biocharred the trees. It took two years for that biochar to get down to the root zone, but when it did, the explosion. I mean, this, this I pulled off so many oranges off this tree already, and there's still tons left. This tree used to produce 50, 60 oranges. Now it produces hundreds and hundreds. This little tangerine tree over here used to produce six. Now it produces one to 200, and they're delicious, juicy. When I first built this raised bed, we went down two feet below the surface because I wanted a really good soil going very deep. And then, of course, we put steel mesh down, and we put the steel mesh up to here. And it worked great for the rabbits and the dogs. But it didn't work for the rats and the squirrels and the birds. Okay, so just a, about a month ago, we encapsulated the entire thing. Not only do I have nobody messing with my stuff now for all that hard work, but it cut the sun a little bit, about 10 to 15%. I said, wow, this is great, you know? Got a little less sun coming in here because it's pretty intense back here. This is a very hot backyard because of the way the house is and the, just everything, it's real hot back here. So well, we just put in these hanging tomato system. I used to, I bought one of these things at, at um, Green Thumb years ago, the little plastic thing for six bucks. It fell apart, it, it, literally right at the end of the season. It just disintegrated. So the other day I went out and bought the buckets. I drilled a hole in the bottom. And uh, what we did was we took these brand new uh, tomato plants. Uh, those are tomatoes, this is tomatillo. And I took some uh, weed material, a little square like this big, cut down the center, took it, wrapped it around the, the plant, pulled the pot off, wrapped it so the soil wouldn't fall all over, fed the plant through the hole, laid the material out, put soil in there, and now the dirt doesn't come out. It's got that weed thing in there. 
and look at the stem. This has only been in here a week. You should have seen these plants. This is, this system is great because the water is always here, but it also drains and aerates super well. So this is a really great way of growing tomatoes. This is, this, this structure is pretty strong. I'm not worried about the weight, but the tomatoes, yeah, they hang down. You know, but look how this thing wants to grow up. And look, I, this is incredible. This thing was a little skinny nothing like a week and a half, two weeks ago when I put them in here. These are 1980s aluminum satellite dishes he got from an old salvage oh, place. God, I love it. <laughs> he put amazing. them up on a tripod so his mom uh, yeah. would not have to kneel over to garden. We love it. When she couldn't uh, garden anymore, he like brought them over mom, here. Like, yep. So this is my herb garden. And this is this top here is a spark arrestor for a fire pit yeah. because the birds were the, the scrub jays were just decimating this with all the wonderful strawberries that get out of here <laughs> so I had bird netting the little sticks holding it up oh but they still got in a nuisance bird netting not anyway. anymore this is terrific this is just great and you can open it from both sides oh, now this is set up on a drip system so whatever drips down to the bottom we capture that water and we reuse it everywhere else Again, wow. repurposing as much as we can possibly do where we are. So these are race racerinos satellite dish. Look at that thing, it really fill it up there. If you could all gather right around here, it'd be great. <laughs> Look at this. Woo! Okay, this is a pyramid kiln. This is my favorite way to make biochar simply, easily, and a very high quality and a pretty good amount. So what we do is we light this from the top and it burns down and it creates our bed of coals. Then we start layering in material, a layer about this thick. And we'll use all this wood here from our property. That's waste wood from a lumber mill, whatever we get that's clean and untreated. And once we get that coal beds of, bed of coals, then we put the next wood in. What happens is the oxygen moves up. It's deprived down below. Wood burns twice. First it burns to charcoal and if you let it continue burning with oxygen, it'll turn to ash. Without oxygen, it'll stay charcoal. So it's kind of simple. So what happens is all the material that we already burned in the first burn is down below with no oxygen, so it stays in charcoal. Very little ash, if any. Well, a little bit. And then we just keep layering up, layering up, layering up until we get to the top. And the last one, we burn a little longer, so everything burns completely through, so it's pure charcoal. And then we douse it with water and shut it off. Oh, that's, how you, that's how you put it out. So yeah, speak. this is a, a, a fixed bottom. So then we take that water after it's all cool and we tilt this over and capture that water and use it on the compost, use it in other areas. Again, we recycle, trying to let, you know, I mean, I don't mind it going into the groundwater, but with water so precious, we reuse it. So the important things for me and my soil are the base soil, the biochar, the compost, the worm castings, crab, rock dust, um, and other amendments that we put in there. And when we're talking about soil, we're talking about living soil. That's my work, creating a living soil, something that will not only be great now, but gets better every year. And by putting all the possible things that nature needs in there, including mineralization, a lot of us are lacking that. So I mix my own rock dust. I've got 12 different kinds of mineral complexes and mix them together myself. You don't necessarily need to do that. I'm just a mad scientist. I like to go and do all the things to the extreme if I can. You learn a lot that way. So we mix all these things up. And then remember, you got your bacterial and you got your fungal. And the bacterial will survive an ice age. The fungal won't even survive being tilled. Fungal is very weak. Fungal <coughs> and bacterial balanced together, great soil. Without that fungal, you're not at your peak. You're not at your ultimate that you could be doing. So I don't, I try never to till very little. I use cover crops. I use lots of mulch because when you put mulch, heavy mulch in between the soil and the mulch is where your fungal is going to start growing. And if you've ever been in a, in a wooded area and you see a big pile of leaves and you pull it away and you see all those white little lines, that's the, that's the fungal, that's the mycelium. That's all the good stuff. Glomalin which is that magical stuff in soil that really makes all the cation exchange and all the functions of the plants work. So building great soil is a lot of work, but once you do it, we're talking something that's sustainable. Now we know the biochar, out of all the ingredients in here, the biochar is the permanent one. It lasts about 2,000 years. 
So you never have to reapply it unless you want to put more in. And I always do put a teeny bit more every year because I'm always building my soil up. What is compost? It's your new soil, plus all those wonderful ingredients and bacterial and fungal and all the wonderful things that are in it in your compost. Composting is so important because we lose our soil. Now, when the leaves fall from a tree, what does nature say? Leave it right there. Why? Because that's the new compost that's going to create the new soil, and that is the circle that that tree has. When we take them away, we actually change the dynamics of that tree's life. And it really does make a difference. So I don't say leave the leaves there, but take them, compost them, and put the compost down, at least. If you could, I know it's a little sunny here, but I want you to see inside here. I love composting. So I built myself a compost barn. This is critter proof. You know, we got a lot of critters here. The rabbits, the rats, the squirrels, the dogs, the birds, you name it. You know, we got it. And this is completely encased floor, walls, and ceilings. Now this system, there's a lot of, this is, it's usually around this high. That's like seven to eight yards right here of material. Underneath this pile, is an aeration system and if you could just peek in here you see that big blower there and how the big blower pipe goes down underground under the pile is a maze of piping with holes in it strain piping just four inch drain piping perforated. with holes in it perforated that's the you know this this the accordion kind so we right. twist it around and every hour two minutes of air blows up through the pile to keep it always aerobic and if you notice on top the charcoal okay we are we have a 10% by volume mix of biochar in with this compost. When you add biochar to your compost, you're going to cha change your compost to a better state. On a typical compost cycle, you'll have three to five percent nitrogen at the end. It's not very much. This I'll have 50 to 75 percent because I also use wood vinegar, which helps to uh, bring that up as well. So what we do is when we mix everything or we return this whole pile and add new materials in, we always put a cap of biochar on the top. And then when we turn it, we're mixing it in next time. But the reason for the cap is, it's capturing the methane and NOx and CO2 coming out of the pile and it doesn't go in the atmosphere. It locks into the char and we bury it in the ground, we sequestered it. So it captures our nitrogen. It does speed up the process of decomposition a little bit. So incorporating biochar into your compost is that, for backyard gardeners, a better way to do it than putting it directly on as an amendment? Yes. Now, it all depends on the biochar product, because remember, not all biochars are the same. Not just because there's some better quality and so forth, but some of them are blended with things like our super char from Organic Solution. That's ready to use, because it's got the worm castings that's been in there for a while. It's got the humate, it's got the rock dust, it's got the crab shell, it's got the ambrosia, the liquid worm castings we hydrate it with. I mean, this yeah. is valuable stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, making it is wonderful. Having it, it's like, oh, I don't want to use it. It's so wonderful. <laughs> no, you got to use it. That's what it's for. <laughs> Get it out there everywhere. We, we use compost all the time. We mix it in with our soils. We also top um, our, our um, potted plants, and then we, you know, put more mulch on top. Not like, you know, it's a fertilizer. It is, but it really is much more than that. It is your next generation of soil. Remember, leaves fall from the tree, decompose, add to the soil. Uh, so, so, Mike, I have uh, several raised bed gardens, and so would you suggest like an inch of compost on top of the... And then at least two inches of mulch on top of that. And then two inches mulch, of mulch. Mulch, 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 mulch. Can't say enough about mulch. It's so important because... Be, that, and, and natural mulch. Natural woods that'll decompose. Not rocks, not rubber, not anything. No, none of the colored mulch. Don't use any of that just straight up mulch, because that mulch not only protects the soil from evaporation, but it protects it from the UV rays, because you leave soil bare and it turns, it goes dead. 